Okay, Cody's from Ontario, awesome. And Jack's from South Africa, seven on the scale from one to 10. Awesome, okay, I'm so glad to have everyone here. I really hope you got a lot of information from here. Never hesitate to ask any questions. Um, I'm going to try to keep this to about one hour, um, but I want to get through uh, just the three, what we're going to be talking about is the three main things you have to be doing in order to really give yourself the best chance of being successful in the actuarial field. So we're going to talk about those for probably about the first half an hour or so. And then I'm going to be taking lots of questions. So make sure uh, you're putting any questions that you come up with, anything that you are, are interested in learning more about. There's a Q&A button uh, right below the video. Uh, you can press that and then that will put questions here for me to answer. Um, if you on YouTube, you can put your questions in the chat and I'll try to check back there if I, if I can find any. Sometimes the chat moves really quick on YouTube. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, for those that you, of you that don't already know me, I'm Bria and I am a... Uh, an associate, <laughs> I couldn't think of it there for a second. I'm an associate of the Society of Actuaries or also known as an ASA, which means that I've passed several exams um, and I'll talk more about the exam system later on, but there's a bunch of exams you have to take. I've passed many of those. Um, and I've also worked in actuarial positions for about over five years total experience doing that. Um, I went to the University of Waterloo, graduated with an actuarial science degree. Uh, so really all this combined has helped me to learn what it really takes to become an actuary, to work in the actuarial field. Um, and, and along all that, on top of all that, I've been also helping other people just like you, aspiring actuaries, to pass their actuarial exams and get their first job as well. So I'll be telling you a little bit more about that and how that works later on because like I said, this is not going to be a very a very long presentation or anything. It's going to go through uh, the basics and, and in my programs the where I help other people achieve actuarial success. That's where we're really going to go deeper into these uh, different areas and topics and really um, make sure you have all the knowledge that you need. Okay, so let's get into these three things that you really need to be doing um, to give yourself the best chance of getting a job. I, I did write some things down here just because I don't want to forget to tell you anything. So if you see me looking down, that is why. Okay, so one thing that you really need to be doing, it's probably something you already know, is you need to be working towards passing actuarial exams. Um, at the end, we're actually going to look at a few job postings and I'll show you on those job postings how the three things that I've talked about are things that employers are actually really looking for. Like they put these right in their job descriptions, so they're very important. But anyway, the first thing you'll have to start working towards is passing actuarial exams. It's very uncommon to even get an entry level actuarial position or an internship if you don't have any exams passed. So in order to become a fully qualified actuary, there are 10 exams that you have to pass. It does take quite a while to get through all these exams. Some people, they, they just pass the first two and then decide that they don't want to go any further and they decide to pursue a different career. Other people get very close to the end and just decide that they're not going to finish them all and, and keep working as an actuary um, because you can actually work in, that, in the field uh, before you even have all your exams passed. Okay, so like if you have any questions about this while I'm going through, just put them in the Q&A and I'll, I will answer exam related questions at the end of this section. But anyway, actuarial exams are very difficult. They, they're math based exams. They're multiple choice. The, the beginning, the initial ones are multiple choice exams. So really that in itself is, is kind of odd because you don't really see many math exams that are multiple choice. Um, there's quite a bit of ex, uh, material on the exams and the content just tends to be more difficult than the average 
average math you've been used to doing or and things like that. It's it's quite difficult math, a lot of calculus and, and stuff like that. So even before you start taking your actuarial exams, you'll want to make sure that you have a good foundation, uh, a good calculus foundation. Okay, so when before you start applying for actuarial jobs, most employers are going to require that you have at least one exam passed. But if you want to be one of those top candidates, then you're going to want to try to get more than one exam so that you can just prove to them even more that you're really dedicated to this career, you really want it, and, and you're willing to put in the work that it takes. So a minimum of one is what most job, uh, or like many job, uh, descriptions require, but some also ask that you have two or three. And, and this, is, this applies specifically to the U.S. Um, and Canada, which is where I live. The, the field, the actuarial field is even more competitive, so sometimes you have to actually have more exams just, just in order to be a competitive candidate. So, so I should have mentioned this earlier, but Right now, the, the actuarial field, it's a bit saturated. There are lots of people that are really interested in the career. They want to do it. It sounds like a, a dream job for them. And for many people, it can be. It's an awesome job. Uh, but there's just not that many actuarial positions open. There, okay, I don't want to, to be misconstrued or anything. There are lots of actuarial jobs. Just there's so many people that want to be actuaries that there's just the, the supply and demand is a bit off right now. There's a lot more supply of actuaries than there are jobs available. So that's why this whole presentation is really important for you because we're going to, you're going to be learning what you can do to be one of those top candidates. And that's going to give you the best uh, chance of getting into the actuarial field. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so let's talk about any questions that come up when I talk about actuarial exams. What, what kind of things come to mind? What questions do you have about this topic? Uh, I'm going to take a few of those right now, and if I can't get to them all, uh, like I'll take two or three right now, and then the rest I will answer or try to answer at the very end, because this is a really important part of your journey. So I wanna make sure that you're on track, you understand what's going on here. So right down below the video, there's a Q&A section and that's where it, it, you can uh, go to ask any questions that you have. I'm probably not going to take them from the chat just because there's a lot going on there and it's difficult to find the questions. Okay, so I see a, a really good question here from Caroline. And she asked, will exams expire after, after a long time? So, and I've actually got this question quite a few times. People sometimes have taken exams a, a long time ago and now have decided, okay, maybe they actually want to start pursuing that again. Or, or they were just worried that um, maybe my exam will only be uh, okay and, and irrelevant for a year or so and then I would lose that exam or, or whatever. Whatever the fear is, it's good news for you because actuarial exams do not expire. So if, if you took exam P or FM or any of the early exams, those exam P and FM are usually the very first exams that people take. So if you took those exams five years ago or 10 years ago, that's totally fine. They're still relevant. You do not have to take them again. And actually, I don't even, like you can't take them again. The Society of Actuaries won't let you retake exams, okay? Uh, the only thing is that sometimes the, the names and the content that is tested on actuarial exams changes. So for instance, right, like five or 10 years ago, there was an exam, it was the third exam, it was called MFE. And that exam is no longer around, it's kind of been replaced with an exam called IFM. So if you took exam MFE a long time ago, you would actually still be able to get credit for the current exam, which is IFM. So even though, uh, I, even though MFE or, or an old exam isn't any longer one of the required exams, usually they'll allow those older exams to give you credit for a current exam, okay? 
So that's a really good question. I'm sure lots of people had that one. Uh, let me see here. Um, okay, here's another question. Oh, the chat keeps moving on me here. Okay, so Shenika asks, where can I work if I did not sit for any exams? So where can you get a job if you didn't pass any actuarial exams yet? So the answer to this is, it's going to be difficult to get a job if you don't have any exams passed at all. So that's why it's really, really important to make this a high priority. If, if you were one of those people that uh, rated your seriousness about becoming a, an actuary as a six or higher, then you're really going to want to start dedicating yourself to passing an actuarial exam and just try it out, see what it's like, see if you can do it, see if this is something that you actually want to pursue and do long term. Because uh, there's no harm in just trying it out, right? Um, I, I actually have a study strategy program, which I'm not going to talk about too much today because I have a different way that you can work with me. But in that program, I've helped tons and tons of people pass their actuarial exams. So I work with so many people to get through the exams. Really, it, it's doable for anyone as long as you are committed and you're serious about passing them. So if you, are, if you want to get into the actuarial field, I probably wouldn't spend too much time trying to find a job before you've even passed any exams. So I would highly recommend that you take the first step to be uh, just passing that first exam. If you're planning to work in the US or Canada, your very first exam should be exam P or exam FM. Exam P stands for probability, and exam FM stands for financial mathematics. Okay, great question. I will take one more here. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so Sabin asks about how long should you study before sitting for an exam? So really, how long do you need to prepare before you take your first actuarial exam? Now, like I said, I worked with hundreds of people to pass their first actuarial exam. And really what I found is about 14 weeks or, or three months tends to be enough time for most people. Now, it's going to be diff different for everyone. It depends on the, the kind of knowledge and, and background, educational background you have. It depends on how much time you're able to spend studying. It depends on the support and, and motivation that you have from others in your life. So all those are going to contribute to, and your study strategy too, that plays a huge part in how long it takes you to prepare for an exam. Um, it's really different for everyone, but generally I recommend about three months. And that's what I found for all the members of my program. It gives them a it allows them to go at a decent pace and, and if they stay consistent with their studying then usually that's enough time uh, and it also and it also gives them a little extra wiggle room so if there are certain topics that they need to spend a bit more time on that having three months or, or 14 weeks to prepare it really gives allows them that time okay so great question okay I, I will try to answer as many other questions as I can. There are so many good ones here. There are 37 other questions, so I won't be able to get to them all. But I'll, I will try to answer more as we go through this and at the end for sure. Okay, so let's move on to the number two thing that you need to start working on now to make sure that you can be successful and be a top competitor for those actuarial jobs. Okay, and that is improving your technical skills. I see, uh, I also have helped many people create a resume and, and get an actuarial job or, or try to get internships and all those kinds of things. I've seen tons and tons of resumes. And one of the things that is often lacking is just any technical skills. So when I was working as an actuary, I probably spent almost every single day i'd say 99 percent of my days i used excel excel is a very 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 important skill for any aspiring actuary to 
uh, just know how to use. So let me know in the chat if you already have experience using Excel or maybe if you're very beginner, intermediate or advanced, let me know that in the chat. I'd really love to see where you guys are at in terms of your Excel knowledge. Um, and that's not really the only thing that you need to know in order to become an actuary, but Excel is used in almost every workplace that hires actuaries. So that's why it's the number one skill, technical skill that I recommend you learn um, before you start applying to actuarial jobs. Okay, so I see that Mike's a beginner in Excel. Awesome. Karine is intermediate to advanced. I want to get better. Awesome. Actually, right now, I've been doing it for, for members of my program where I help people pass actuarial exams. I've been doing eight weeks of live Excel training. It's been so fun. Uh, they've, they kind of started at beginner level, but now we're starting to get more into the advanced Excel. And then we're also going to start doing VBA lessons. And VBA is basically a programming language that you can use to automate tasks in Excel. Because uh, when you're working as an actuary and using Excel all the time, you don't want to be doing everything manually. So it's really good to be able to uh, use your programming knowledge to be able to automate tasks in Excel. So it, it's really interesting to see if you have any experience using VBA, also let me know that in the chat. Okay, Avishek is intermediate, awesome. Elizabeth, very much a beginner in Excel, okay. Stefan, okay, lots of beginners. That's awesome to see. Intermediate to advanced, great. Uh, Dave, Dave is using Google Sheets. Awesome. Google Sheets is very similar to Excel. Uh, Excel has some extra capabilities and sometimes you have to do things a bit different, differently in Excel. But I, I find that Google Sheets is a pretty good way to at least learn the basics um, up to an intermediate level in, in uh, Excel. So great. Um, Michael is intermediate to advanced. Lots of lots of intermediate to advanced. Very good. Okay, no VBA experience. Okay, wow. You guys have a lot of, of uh, technical skills already in terms of your Excel. I see a few people that know a little bit of VBA. Some have no experience using VBA. That's okay. Uh, there there are ways to learn Excel. Uh, and VBA online. I, like I said, I'm teaching an eight week course right now to members of my program. And, and I'm actually going to tell you later on about my brand new program for helping aspiring actuaries like you reach all the way from just kind of discovery of the actuarial career all the way to their first full-time job. So it's, it's a brand new program where I'm going to be helping uh, pass exams, get jobs, learn about the career overall, get the technical skills that you need to become an actuary, uh, and, and it's basically just centered around a whole community. So it's going to be really awesome. I'll tell you about it a bit more at the end here. I think it will be really beneficial for so many of you that are on this journey or just starting it. Okay, so lots of you have te some technical skills. This is something that I want you to also start trying to apply in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, if, if you are already working in an office type environment or in some other area where you could potentially start using Excel on the job, that's even better. If you can show employers that you're able to use the skills that you've learned in Excel and VBA and apply them to the real world, that's going to make you such a better candidate than someone that just puts on their resume that they've passed a course or taken a course in VBA um, and Excel. So I strongly encourage you to try your best to use that in your day-to-day -day life, in your work, uh, and, and put that on your resume when you start applying for actuarial jobs because it's so important. Okay, so what questions come to mind for you relating to the technical skills that actuaries need? Uh, if you have any ideas, put those in the Q&A box, and that's where I'll be taking the questions from. Um, and just so you're aware, as an actuary, you will probably be using other programs and, and stuff other than Excel. There are lots and lots of different programs that actuaries use, but I recommend using Excel or learning Excel and VBA first because those ones are used in almost every single workplace. 
So you can go ahead and, and learn other programs like uh, a P Python, which is a, code, a programming language, or R, or SAS, or any of those other ones. Uh, but you just don't know where you're going to end up getting your job. So they may not even use those different programs in, in their work environment, but it's almost guaranteed that they will be using Excel and VBA. So that's why I, I say try to learn those ones, make those your highest priority. And, and typically it tends to be fairly easy to, to just learn other ones quickly once you know how to use Excel and VBA. So you can kind of apply the knowledge you've learned on those ones and apply to different uh, programs. Okay, so, okay, questions now. So Elizabeth asks, how can I learn Excel online? Great question, Elizabeth. If you decide to join the accelerator program or the accelerated community that I'm going to talk about at the end, I'm going to include Excel sessions in there. So that's one really good way to learn Excel. We go step by step through a whole um, actual, like a premium calculator. So I've applied Excel, learning Excel and VBA to something that might actually be used in a real actuarial environment. So that's one place. There are other places that you can go, like YouTube. Um, Skillshare is another one I know of, maybe Udemy, something like that. You can probably find some Excel lessons there. Um, what I personally think about the sessions that I'm doing currently is that I'm able to tell the people that I, I'm helping right now what I used in my day-to-day -day work every single day as an actuary. So from that perspective, you might prefer to, uh, oh, and another one is there's a TIA technical skills course that you can purchase as well that goes through some Excel. But anyway, I, like I was saying is just, if you have this knowledge from someone that's already working in the actuarial field, you'll, be, you'll just have more insight into how these functions and everything that you're learning in Excel might be applied in your real work. Okay, great question. Um, next is, let me see, is there anything on YouTube here? Um, it's hard to find the questions. Okay, so Lewis asked in VBA, what skills are required to do by an actuary? Professor just wants us to do numerical analysis problems. Okay, so Lewis is wondering what kind of v VBA you might need to use as an actuary. And really, it, it's hard to say because you're just, you're going to be automating different tasks in Excel. So as an example, when I was working at a life insurance company, I was responsible for calculating the, the reserves or, or I was a valuation actuary. I'm not going to get into that too much right now, but basically that means I was responsible for determining how much money the insurance company needs to hold and invest into different assets so that we could guarantee that we have enough money for our future claims that are going to come in. So for any life insurance related claims. So when I was doing that process each month, I had, I had to do the same task over and over and over and over and over again. Like you can imagine an insurance company has thousands and thousands of different policy holders. So I didn't want to have to do the same thing manually in an Excel, in an Excel spreadsheet over and over again. So that's why I implemented uh, uh, VBA code so that the VBA code could run through all those thousands and thousands and thousands of policyholders automatically. So that would really reduce mistakes. It really increases or decreases the amount of time it takes to get tasks done because if I had to do that manually, if I had to go through thousands and thousands of policyholders manually, it could have taken me days and days. But with, uh, with VBA, I can automate that task and it would take me maybe 30 seconds. You just click a button, it runs through the code really quickly, gets it done in 30 seconds. So it's a really big time saver. So in my experience, that's how I generally used VBA, is just to automate tasks so that you didn't have to do them over and over again manually. Okay, great question. Okay, let's move on to the third thing that you really need to be doing in order to give yourself the best chance of being successful in the actuarial career. 
Okay. And this is one that I see so few people do, but it's really the one that will make the biggest difference in whether you get the job or not. And that is getting related experience. Okay. So getting related experience is so important because employers would prefer not to have to train you on every little thing. Um, the more you know about, the more you know about insurance, the more you know about financial concepts, the more you know about probability and all those kind of things, it's just going to make you such a, a more competitive candidate because employers don't have to teach you all that stuff like when you start your position. So there are lots of different types of positions you could move into it. And that's what I'm, I'm suggesting you do here is if you want, if you're really serious about becoming an actuary, I suggest that if your current position is not related to the actuarial field, then before you start anything else, like this is if you're very serious about it, before you start passing your exams, before you start working on your technical skills, your number one priority should be trying to switch to a job that is more related to actuarial work. So this could be something like an underwriter, for example. I've actually, I actually had someone that was working in an engineering position. So he was an engineer working on rockets, okay? He wants to become an actuary now. So engineering, yes, there are some similarities. And I actually think with his experience, he could have gone directly to an actuarial role. But we fixed up his resume, made sure it was really proving that he had work-related experience that was something that an actuary would be in, like, need. And he ended up getting a job in underwriting. So now, with his underwriting experience, it's going to be so much easier for him to get a job as an actuary. He's going to have some really good um, insurance knowledge. He's going to probably be working fairly closely with actuaries. So something like that is going to just make him a really top qualified candidate for entry level actuarial positions. I have another girl that's in one of my programs. I just talked to her a lot earlier this week and she is currently an underwriter and she's working with the actuaries and stuff and decided that she actually wants to become an actuary. She, she liked what they did. They th she thought the, the work was interesting and stuff. So her manager said, okay, uh, well, we can probably get you into an actuarial role if you can pass one actuarial exam. So that's what she's working on right now in one of my programs. She's working on passing her very first exam so that she can get into any open actuarial positions that come available in her insurance company. Okay, so really it, this can make a huge difference. Try to find a position that is related to actuarial work. Now, I'm gonna go way more in depth in this in, in my program, my accelerator program that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can get these related jobs and going to help you create a resume that's going to get you those jobs and everything like that. Um, but anyway, I, I strongly encourage you to figure out ways that you can gain experience that would be really relevant to an actuarial position. Now, a lot of people try to get actuarial jobs with very little related experience. It's hard to show an employer that you are, are a good candidate if you have um, experience that is in a completely different field. So that's why I suggest that early on in your journey to becoming an actuary, you try to shift over a bit and shift closer to the actuarial career. Then while you're working at that related position, that's when you start passing your actuarial exams, learning your technical skills. And then by about like a year, a year and a half later, you can be ready for an actuarial job. You can fix up your resume, make sure it's really good, and then start applying to those actuarial positions. So, and, and with all that combined, you're going to be a really top candidate. Okay, so I hope that was insightful. Let me know what questions come to mind regarding what I just talked about uh, and getting that related experience because it's so important. Um, and then I will tell you a little bit more about the Actuary Accelerator Program, or 
I have to stop saying program, it's a community, the Actuary Accelerator community. I'm used to saying program because my, the program that I help people pass actuarial exams is called the Study Strategy Program. So I have to change my wording there a bit. Okay. So I saw a, question, a really good one here happened. Uh, where'd it go? Okay. Okay, so Carolyn asks, would I say that a math teacher is at least somewhat related, sorry, it, it moved on me, is at least somewhat related to actuarial science? Okay, so I've helped, I can't, I, I've helped lots of math teachers. I don't exactly remember where they went on to, but I do specifically remember someone that very recently was a, a math tutor. So his main experience was just tutoring people in math. Okay, so that's very similar to uh, being a math teacher. And he ended up getting an internship, an actuarial internship in um, pet insurance, actually. So that's pretty cool. It, math, being a math teacher, it's certainly related. Could you get more related? Yes, you could. But I think that having that background and experience is really, really beneficial. And I don't think that you'd have a huge problem trying to get into the career if you can prove that you've got those technical skills pass, and that you pass exams. I don't think it would be too much of a leap for you to go directly from being a math teacher to an actuary. And, and I have seen many people do this. Like, I, I, I can't think off the top of my head of anyone, but I know that happens. So I wouldn't um, say definitely don't do that or anything. I just think you could potentially move yourself closer to the actuarial field by getting a job that's a bit more related. But it's certainly possible to go directly from a math teacher to an actuary for sure. Okay. Um, okay, so Daniel asks, what other types of jobs are related? So he says, he's assuming an accountant would be uh, related. So really, it, yeah, if you had accounting experience or, or even anything in the financial industry, I think that would be very good experience for you to become an actuary. Um, I actually have a whole course on creating a resume and finding an actuarial job in the accelerator community. Um, and in there I go through some of the jobs that are really related to actuarial work. And then I can help you come up with a resume that's going to get you those jobs. But yeah, underwriter is another one that's very related. Anything in the financial industries like we already talked about, anything in insurance would probably be, be very uh, good. It, it really depends on what you're doing, but even getting exposure to insurance and how the different types of insurance products works would be very beneficial. Um, anything where you're doing a lot of data analysis, so maybe a, a, dan a data an analyst position would be good, financial analyst, risk analyst. I have I've actually worked with some people that are currently risk analysts and they want to move into the actuarial field. So anything like that um, are, are very related and would be extremely beneficial. Okay, I'll take one more question, unless there's anything on YouTube. Okay, I don't see any related to what we're talking about right here. So, um, okay, so if, if, you, if you've already passed exam P and exam FM, and you haven't worked anywhere, how are you going to have the experience needed? So in order to get these related positions, you don't need to have any actuarial exams passed. The actuarial exams are just if you want to start working in actuarial fields. So if you already have exam P and FN passed, that's awesome. I would recommend now your next step is to go find a related job. Do, do whatever you can to get into something that where you're going to be using Excel or get into something where you're going to be using a lot of data analysis, uh, try, maybe underwriting, any of those positions that I just talked about would be a really good next step for you if you don't have any 
other experience. That being said, like I've helped many people on their actual journey to getting their first job. And a lot of the time, the experience on their resume, they don't immediately see how it's relevant. But uh, in the, the course that I have in the Accelerator community, it's actually, it goes through how to, how to turn your past experience into experience that is more related. So if you are someone that thinks they might have uh, a type of position that is somewhat related, I can really show you how to turn uh, your experience into something that an actuarial employer would be looking for. Uh, I completely understand that it's hard for someone that is not already in the actuarial world and the actuarial field to kind of know what what they're looking for but i do explain that in my course and also there are our q a sessions kind of just like this where uh, you can ask questions back and forth and i can help you along the way so those are in there too so if you run into any problems at all then that's going to be a really good way for you to uh, seek my advice on how i would handle certain things like your resume and things like that so that's all in the accelerator community Okay, so there are still lots more questions. I will try to get to a few more as we go on, but I do just want to really tell you about how be becoming a member of the Accelerator um, community will be really good. Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to become, if you're serious about becoming an actuary, I think this is really a good place for you. So. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so basically this is a brand new program that I've decided to release because like you, you may already know, I, I currently have a study strategy program where I'm helping people every single day. We're working currently with over 200 people in the study strategy program, helping them pass their very first actuarial exam or some of them are already working on their second and third actuarial exams. So that, that's a very hands-on, um, I'm, I'm constantly helping each and every person in there, but there's just so many people that want to want help with the next step and everything. So I, I, then I created a job search program where I was helping people get, like create a resume that's really good, help them apply to jobs and get the jobs that they want and, and just guide them on the whole path. But that's why I've decided kind of to just create a whole community that is designated to helping people like you uh, just go through their whole journey from beginning to getting that very first actuarial job. So this accelerator community, it, it's basically going to help you learn all about the actuarial career. We're going to have lots of things about how to prepare for your exam. I'm using my experience with working with over a thousand people on their exams, helping them come up with a good study strategy. So there's going to be a whole course in the community all about that, all about recommended study materials, calculators, and just so much about studying for your actuarial exams, a, a Q&A form to get your questions answered. On top of that, then we're also going to have um, like a resume, the resume course that's in there. I'm going to do a whole course about how to get a job, um, how to, to create a resume that really stands out. Um, and then there's going to be stuff about technical skills, how to learn Excel. You're going to get access to my Excel training sessions. I'm going to do VBA training sessions. Um, really, this is going to be just a community of people coming together. There's going to be a WhatsApp group so that we can all chat in there, answer each other's questions, help everyone stay motivated and focused, um, and just a whole community of other people like you going through the exact same process. So. That is um, kind of sums up the accelerator program. And, and I did forget to mention that there's a 24 month path for, to get you from beginning to end, like getting wherever you're starting at right now, getting you to that full time actuarial job. And, and we're going to do a full course on that as well. So this is a brand new program and I'm currently opening it up for founding members. So a founding member means you're going to be one of the very first people in this community. And that means 
You are, are going to get so much more access to me. You are actually going to be able to attend many of the sessions and, and the training courses live so that you can ask questions, make sure that all the videos that I create for everyone answers all the questions that people actually have. So you'll be able to participate in all of those. Um, you're going to get a really good founder membership um, rate. So in the future, this is going to be about $59 per month. But as a founding member, if you join like in the next week, you're going to get the founder member rates, which are 50%. So that would be $30 a month or $29 a month. And that goes on for forever. So as long as you continue to be a member, you are going to get those founder rates. It's never going to increase for you. Okay. And um, just, just for people on this webinar, I'm giving your very first month in the program for just $1. So I'm going to put in the chat here, where you can go to get all the details on the Accelerator community. Um, okay, in the chat, I just put a link to it. And you can use coupon code, coupon code success to get a success. And that will get you your first month for $1. Okay, so this is really, it's going to be a huge community of everyone that um, is interested in the actuarial career coming together to help each other uh, learn about the career, learn how to pass exams and the study strategy surrounding that. We're going to, you're going to learn how to create a resume that really stands out and, and learn those technical skills. Really, it's going to go guide you from beginning to end and we're going to do that as a community. So it's really going to help you stay focused um, sometimes, sometimes being an actuary and studying to become an actuary, it can feel a little lonely because you may not even know anyone else in the actuarial field. You may not have friends that are doing this or family members that even understand anything about what you're doing. So to actually have a community to go to and talk about actuarial stuff is really beneficial because that may be the only other people that you know that are doing actuarial work and, and studying towards the same goal as you. So I highly recommend just checking that out. Uh, and link is in the chat if you're interested in joining that. Okay, uh, and as well, any questions that come up about that as you read through the details and everything, just let me know, put your questions in the Q&A. And actually, sorry, I didn't put that on YouTube for you guys. Okay, for YouTube, I put that into the chat so you can go check that out. Okay, so any questions that come up relating to that, please just put them in the Q&A. I will get to them for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to take a few more questions. I have until eight o'clock, so that's about 15 more minutes to answer any questions about anything we talked about today. Okay. Okay, so um, Aklama asked, when will this car course start that you're talking about? So this is not, it's not going to be uh, like a course that you have to join at the very beginning. How it works is since you are founding members, everything hasn't been created yet. I want to put a whole bunch of resources in here for you about how to pass exams, how to learn the technical skills that you need, how to get your first actuarial job. And as founding members, you're actually going to be creating those videos with me. So I'm going to be teaching the courses live and you will be able to ask questions and everything on, during the session as I teach it live. But then the recordings will be placed in the members area for other people to watch later. So as a founding member, you actually get a huge advantage because you'll be able to attend these courses live and get your questions answered on the spot. Whereas other people that join later that are not founders of the community, they, they won't be able to participate in those live sessions. So that's a really big benefit of being a founder member. Um, and actually, let me know also if there's any other 
um, types of courses you would be interested in learning more about and having in the community because I'm going to be taking member suggestions. So I'll, I'm perfect, I'm totally willing to add in there what you need to succeed. So anything that you are, anything that you're interested in knowing more about, I'm planning to add some terminology courses in there. Anything related to the actuarial career, I'm going to throw it in there and have this be a huge resource uh, for anyone, any aspiring actuaries. You're going to have everything you need in there eventually. But since you're a founder, that's why you get this special rate because everything isn't in there yet. And, and you also are one of the first people in there, right? So you're going to get a really low payment rate um, for forever. Other people will be paying much more than you, um, but founders are getting only 20, are paying only $29 per month forever. And that, that locks in for as long as you are a member. So, um, Oh, lovely said, I was able to join. How can I look at this from the beginning? Thank you for having this. Awesome, I'm so glad to have you as a member. Um, it, how can I look at this from the beginning? Okay, so lovely, we one of the first courses that I plan to create with everyone that joins as a founding member is probably going to be filmed later next week. And we're going to go through my whole 24 month plan. So I've actually designed a whole 24 month plan that will get you from the very beginning all the way to getting your first actuarial job in 24 months. I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do. So that's, that's going to be probably about an hour long course. So within that course, there are going to be certain steps that you have to take, right? So for each of those steps that you have to take, we're actually going to create more videos each on each individual step to becoming an actuary. We're going to create videos about studying for your exams, about getting those technical skills that you need, all about uh, creating your, your uh, resume and all that kind of stuff. So those are courses that are yet to come but will be added within the next month along with you guys, like with my founding members, okay? Um, and already, just if you join now, there's already um, some Excel sessions in there that you can watch. There's a Q&A forum where you can get math questions answered. I've actually already done three Q&A sessions that you can go in there and watch. Those are about an hour long each if you want. Um, just asking anything actuarial related. So um, you can go ahead and watch those. There are some short bite-sized videos answering specific questions. So um, actually, let me show you here for a second. Share my screen with you guys. Okay, so this is what it actually looks like in the Acceler Accelerator community. So as you can see, there, there are these yellow boxes in some places. That's where we're going to be creating videos and putting them there. They're not created yet because I'm going to be creating them with you guys so that you guys get all your questions answered. Okay, but what I did want to show you was those bite sized answers. So, right here under short answer videos, I've already created several videos that just answer common questions that I get, like, how much does it cost to become an actuary? Am I smart enough to be an actuary? How can I learn calculus? Um, can I be an actuary with my degree? So I've gone through several questions here already, and I'm going to be adding so many more. Like I, I plan on having a hundred different common questions that I get and making a separate bite-sized video for each of them in here. So there are already several of those you can watch. Um, and we're going to have the WhatsApp group. Uh, it's just a community of everyone in the program all helping each other. There are lots of exam resources that we're going to, some of them we have to create still together. Some of them are already available for you. Job resources. See the resume course that I talked about, it's already here for free. Well, not for free, as a member, you get that. Um, the technical skills are in here. See, we've already started creating some of the Excel sessions so you can get three out of the eight sessions that have already been created, recordings of those. Anyway, um, back to questions. Um, okay. So Ali asks, what is the difference between this and your job search program? So 
like I mentioned, I've helped many other people uh, work on creating their resume and getting their first full-time job. So Ali, the difference is that with the job search program, I was actually spending time helping each member create their resume. I was going through it with them, critiquing it, making it the best they can be. So the point is that this provides a lower priced option for people that aren't able to afford that level of a support because it's quite time consuming for me to have to go through the resume and go back and forth with the member and create the best possible resume. So by joining this, it's a more affordable option, but it's more do it yourself. And you can um, actually have me, like I, I didn't mention this, but we're going to be doing two Q and A calls per month. And those are a time, it's, it's very similar to this, where you can come and ask me questions. So at that time is when you would come and ask me questions you have about your resume or about getting your job and things like that. So this program is kind of designed to help you all the way through your, your journey to becoming an actuary, not just the job search portion, but it's also um, a more affordable option because rather than me working individually with each person in the program, like I do in my job search program, this one will be more of a community, a group of people helping each other, and I will be uh, there to support you, but it just won't be as much access as you would get in something like the job search program. So, um, but, but you still do, as a founding member, you're actually going to get much more access to me in the first couple of months because we are going to be going through those courses and creating them together. That's something that people in the future that join in the future, they won't get because they, they, they're going to be watching the recordings. Whereas founding members are going to be able to actually like ask their questions on the spot. They're going to make sure that their questions are answered. And hopefully that answers all the questions that others will have later on when they're watching the replay. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, if any more questions come up about that, please put them in the Q&A. I will get to them. I'm just going to answer a, a more, a, a different question not related to um, that program right now or the community. Okay, so Cheyenne asks, what can I do in high school to start preparing for exams, jobs, internships, and college? Okay, Cheyenne. You can do a lot of the same stuff that we already talked about, but as someone that's just in high school, first I wanna make sure that you are really committed to the actuarial career. You're 100% sure that this is what you do. So joining the um, Accelerator community is actually going to be really good for you because you would get answers to lots of your questions and you can come to Q&A sessions just like this to make sure that you're getting the information that you need to make an informed decision about becoming an actuary. You also can start working on your technical skills right now. That's not something you need to wait on doing. And I also highly suggest you just try to get together with an actuary. Not right now, you won't be able to get together with anyone, but in the future, just try to make an arrangement with an, an actuary or someone that's working in the field uh, so that you can ask them questions and, and just get a better sense of what they're really doing to make sure that this is what you want to commit your time and your, invest your money in before you even get started in the exams and the schooling and all that. Okay, um, Stefan asks, how many months minimal can you sign up for the Accelerator Community Program? Okay, there is no minimum month. So this is, first you go in and you pay month to month. So it, you go in right now, you can get it for $1 using coupon code SUCCESS, you can get your first month. And then that, after that first month is up, that it will go into $30 per month. So, that's an awesome rate because, uh, sorry, $29 per month because you're getting 50% of what the cost will be later. Um, but once you are actually in and you join the monthly, there is options to increase your membership to a quarterly membership or an annual membership. And by doing that, you're going to get even a, like a lower monthly rate. So for example, if you sign up and you, um, 
So if you sign up for an annual membership, then you're actually getting at about $15 per month. And that goes for as long as you are a member. So even in like three years from now or two years from now, if you're still in the program and the price has gone up to $99 per month or whatever it, it becomes in the future, you are still going to be getting it for just $15 a month by joining that uh, annual membership. Same goes for the monthly, like it's guaranteed not to increase um, at all for you guys as founding members. Okay, hopefully that answered your question. Um, Daniel asks, what colleges have the best actuarial science programs? Okay, this is a difficult question to answer because I'm not familiar with every single actuarial program that's available. I can speak for the University of Waterloo, which is where I went, it is in Canada, and it was great. It was an awesome program. Um, it's one of the most popular programs in all of Canada for actuarial science. Um, I will say that it was very difficult, but I think that's going to be the case for any actuarial science program. And, and Daniel, I actually encourage you to consider whether actuarial science, majoring in actuarial science would be the best option for you. I will go into more depth about how, what to major in and the courses you should take and all that kind of stuff in the Accelerator community. I'm definitely going to be adding videos about that. Um, but I don't always 100% suggest going for actuarial science as your major, even if you want to be an actuary. Okay. Um, okay, AC asks, can I go over the fee structure, please? Yes, so for the actuarial accelerator community, it is going to just be $29 per month for founding members, but that means you have to join uh, like this week. Founding members are all going to be joining throughout the next week, okay? But for anyone on this call, just, just until the end of this call, you can get your very first month for only a dollar. So to do that, you have to use coupon code SUCCESS, S-U-C-C-E-S, -C -C -E and that will reduce your very first month to just one dollar. You can go try it out, no harm. And on day 27, so uh, yeah, on day 27, I will send you an email reminding you that your membership is going to renew. Um, unless you upgrade to like the quarterly or the annual, then I won't send you that until later on. But if you stick with your monthly payments, then I will send you an email on day 27 reminding you that the next payment is going to go through soon. And if you decide you don't want to stick in the community, you can cancel your membership. You can do that anytime. Or if you do want to stay in it and keep your rate, um, keep access to all the resources that are in there, continue to come to the Q&A calls and all that stuff, well, then you can just let your membership continue and not cancel it. Um, okay, hopefully that answered your question. Avishek asks, is this a replacement for the job search program or will we have both programs active? Avishek, I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet. Right now, they're all open. I'm not 100% sure, um, I guess, what I'm going to be doing with the study strategy program and the job search program right now. But for now, they're all continuing. Uh, this is just, especially during this time when people want lower price options, I thought this was a really good place to start because if you are looking for my help, but you want a lower price option than the study strategy program or the job search program, you can join this membership um, where you'll get so much access to me, but it just isn't as in depth as what you would be getting in the, the study strategy program and the job search program. But all the information is the same. Like in the, the accelerator program, I'm going to be teaching you the exact study strategy that I use for all the members of the study strategy program. So you're going to learn exactly how to do that. You're going to learn how to set up your own schedule, just like I do for members of the program. You're going to, you're still going to have accountability because what I'm planning on doing is having those Q, those twice per month Q&A calls, those are going to be your kind of milestones in the program. So if you join each of those calls, what we're going to do is kind of um, hold you accountable to what you want to accomplish throughout the next two weeks. So until the next call. So in call number one, you'll, you will make your commitment to what you're going to get done within the next two weeks. 
And then by the next call, you'll be able to say, okay, I did those things that you said to do. Now, what ne what's my next step? So once you get your next step, you'll take those away, try to get those done by the next call. So it's really good for accountability as well. Uh, the discount code is only available until the end of this session. So if you're interested in that, go sign up now. Use coupon code SUCCESS to get your $1 membership for your first month. Okay, um, I'm all looking on YouTube here quickly. Any questions? Hi from Brazil. How many, oh, Panit asks, how many months of commitment is needed at a minimum? There is no commitment. You can cancel any time. So if you decide to try it for one month for the, with that $1 trial, you can cancel at the end of the month and, and there, then you won't be charged anymore, okay? Um, okay, I don't see any, oh, okay, that's the same question. I don't see any other questions there. If any more questions are coming to mind, please don't hesitate to ask. I will stay for a little longer. You guys have such awesome questions. Okay, so Ben asks, as studying for exams takes time and money, how can one be sure that pursuing an actuarial internship is worth it? Okay, I love this, qu this question and I get it quite often um, just because ah, so many people have a dream to be an actuary. I've talked for, to so many people, they say, some people say like 10 years ago, I considered it and, I, and since then I, I really wanted to be an actuary, but I just never did it. Or, or I, I, I looked into the career and was really interested in it. And for, so, for some reason, it just never happened for me. But if this is a goal you have, then you have to invest in yourself. You have to uh, spend the time. You have to invest the money into it because you don't want to be 10 years from now saying, uh, I, I really always wanted to do that. It's been my dream. But then you're 10 years later down the road and you still haven't worked on it or, or even got any closer to it. So I, I personally am a person that if you have a goal, you have to go for it. You ha if you have a dream, you have to go for it because you do not want to be later in your life regretting that you didn't go for a dream that you were able to go for. So invest in yourself. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some money. But the worst thing is that the worst case scenario is that you decide it's not for you. I, I personally believe if everyone takes the steps that I've talked about today and, and takes the initiative to pass those exams, get the technical skills they need, find that related experience, I think that you would be a great actuarial candidate and I do not have any doubt that you'd be able to get an actuarial job. Um, so if this is a dream for you, do it. Don't wait. You don't want to wait any further. So hopefully that answers your question. It's going to be worth pursuing as long as you're committed to it and dedicated to it. Okay. Um, AC asks if study materials are included in this monthly membership. Currently, no study materials are not included, but I do, I'm going to have a whole course in there that I film with all the founding members going through all my study material recommendations. I'll talk about what you really need. I'll talk about what you uh, should get based on your budget, based on your preferred learning style and all that stuff. So there's going to be a whole course about my study material recommendations in there. Uh, I, I don't provide the study materials because I have, I really have considered creating my own study materials for everyone, but there are just so many good options out there already. I don't see uh, a purpose in doing that. I'm just, just to sell something that's already available and, and well written by other people. So what I prefer to do is just help you guys decide and figure out for yourselves what is best for you. And then, yeah, go get that material, come into the, the accelerator community, learn how to use it by, learn how to use your study materials by watching the event soon to come uh, study strategy course that I'm going to be creating and then take it from there, okay? Um, is the study strategy program also included in the Accelerate program? No, it's not. Excel the study strategy program is much more hands-on and, but, but in the Accelerate program, I'm going to be teaching you the exact, uh, the exact strategy that I use. So 
you're going to get a lot of the same benefits. It's just not as hands-on. So either one is perfectly fine. It depends how much you want, uh, how much support from me that you want. Okay, yes, I totally understand. If some of you have to go, that's completely fine. I know this is running a little bit longer. All the content that I wanted to talk about and tell you about is over, but I'm just going to stick around and answer a few more questions. Uh, so if you want to stick around for those, you're very welcome to. If not, then thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. And I'd love to have you. Um, yeah, that success code, it does expire by the end of this session. So that's probably about 10 more minutes or so. Um, and then, yeah, $1 first month, no commitment. You don't have to stay longer than a month if you don't want to. Go in, try it out, and see if you want to continue your membership longer. Okay, um, so many good questions here. Can age be a hindrance factor when looking for a job? Okay, so I I've heard of so many people starting their actuarial journey at 30, 40, 50, age. It, it doesn't matter, like go for your goals. If this is a dream for you, go for it. Don't let your age hold you back. There are always ways to get around problems. So maybe there will be a company that says, uh, we don't want to hire someone that's that age or whatever, but there's going to be many other companies that will hire you. So just, just don't let small factors like that get in the way of your dream because there's always a way around them. Every problem has a solution. And if you want, if you want to pursue the actuarial career, do it. Awesome. Stefan says he's going to continue working towards his dream. Great. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay. Um, what kind of companies employ beginner level actuaries? Um, insurance companies are there also so yeah insurance companies are probably the most common types of employers that hire entry-level actuaries but but I'm sure there are other ones and I'm really actually not too familiar with all the types of places that might hire actuaries but I know there are some that work with in the government for example um, trying to figure out like any health benefits and stuff so if if you are in Canada, we actually have a healthcare system called OHIP, and there are definitely actuaries working to determine how much uh, money the government needs to be uh, saving up for all the healthcare uh, claims that Canadians make in the future. So just by being a Canadian, we're able to get go to the doctor or the hospital, and we don't have to pay for that, but OHIP does pay for it. Our government does pay for that. So they have actuaries working on that to figure out how much money the, the government needs to be saving for those kind of benefits. Um, also, actuaries can work in retire, but retirement benefits. So if a company has some sort of retirement plan for like any type of company has a retirement plan, they might have actuaries working in there too. Um, Okay, Michael asks, oh, you missed the start time. Michael, you can sign up for the Accelerator program. I will put a link in the chat for you to sign up for that. So it's etchedactuarial.com slash accelerator, and you can use coupon code SUCCESS to get your first month for $1. That's going away in 10 minutes, or not 10 minutes, seven minutes from now and we're going to be done this call. That's not going to be an option anymore because I'm only offering it to people on this call, okay? Um, and I saw, oh, Aklema says, I would like to join the Member Accelerate program. Do I need to add my credit card information when I join or can I add it later? So it's actually $1 for your first month so you will have to put that credit card information in or you can also use PayPal if you prefer but you can cancel your membership anytime all there's a cancellation request form in the program you can fill that out and we'll cancel your membership right away so you don't have to worry about getting charged and also on day 27 so 27 days from now I'll send you a reminder email that tells you that your next payment is going to come out soon so you don't have to worry about forgetting about that either um, 
I'm so glad to have so many of you join. Awesome, Daniel joined too. So excited to the, do this. Like the courses that you guys are going to get, you're going to get access to the live trainings which is going to be so beneficial for you. And there's just gonna be so many other resources in there. Um, and it's just going to keep building and building and building in resources just to, to help you achieve your actuarial goal faster and, and more reliably too. So many people go into it, yay! Another joiner, awesome, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, so, so many people go into this career and they're just, they kind of just, I guess it's the same thing I did. I just didn't have any guidance about what I needed to be doing. I didn't have any mentor or anyone to tell me how I should go about doing certain things. And that's really why I created this whole thing because I know my personal journey was one that it just, didn't go as smoothly as it could have. I spent a lot longer studying for exams than I needed to. I spent a lot, a lot of time doing things that I didn't need to be doing throughout my whole journey and stuff. So I, I want to help people just like you achieve success as fast as possible um, and get your first job as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, what can we learn through the accelerator program during one, this one month? Okay, I already showed you there were some Excel sessions in there. I've got the Q, three Q&A videos that are about an hour long in there. So if you have, so that, those go through tons of different questions that you might be having for yourself. There are some bite-sized videos answering questions. Uh, throughout the next month, I'm going to be filming and, and recording tons of the videos that are actually going to be included as replays in the membership area, but you'll be able to get to join those live. So we're going to be going through the whole 24 month accelerator plan to get you from beginning to a job in 24 months. We're going to be going through how to prepare and, and create a study strategy for your actuarial exams. We're going to go through all the study materials. There's going to be a course on that. There's going to be a course on the technical skills that you need as an actuary. There's going to be a course on how to create a really good resume and get a job. Okay, so those are all courses that you can look forward to even in your first month. Um, okay, Daniel, if you're having problems getting that to work, I'll put my email address in um, the chat. Um, so that actually, Okay, so Daniel, I just put my email address in the chat for you there under your question. You can email me and let me know that your payment didn't work and I'll get that figured out. I'm not 100% sure why that would have happened. Okay, so one last question. Um, okay, so let me see. answered a lot of these already. Okay, one more. Um, okay, this one doesn't count because it's about the program. Are all the calls with a group like this or one-on-one? -on -one? The calls are going to be with the community. They're going to be community Q&A calls. So we're going to have everyone asking questions. I'll give answers similar to how we're doing right now, but I also want them to to make sure that you know your next steps going out of the call. So you're keeping on track with this goal that you have. So it's going to be really good for accountability. Um, all those calls will help you figure out what your next step should be. And you can spend the next two weeks like achieving that step and, and getting that step done so that you can co come to the next Q&A call and then get your next step, okay? Um, uh, Les? Okay, thank you, Cheyenne. There's a question, okay. How soon should you start taking your exams? Okay, so typically I recommend that if you're still in school, you start taking your actuarial exams once you are in your second year of school. If you are already out of school, then you should start taking your actuarial exams um, 
pretty much as soon as possible. However, in the 24 month plan that I'm going to talk to you about as a member of the accelerator program, we're actually going to go through my, the step that I believe you should take before even starting your actuarial exams, which is working towards getting that related experience. Okay, so, um, okay, if, if your card is getting declined when you're trying to sign up, it, it doesn't happen very often, but it might be just because so many people are trying to join right now. Um, if, you, if you are having that problem, please send me an email. I put my email address in the chat and I'll get that figured out for you. You could also try PayPal as, your alternative, as an alternative pay, uh, form of payment if you have that. Um, but yeah, I'm really sorry if you're having that difficulty but email me and I'll make sure that you still get uh, your dollar trial. Okay, thank you so much for coming everyone. I hope this has helped and, and left you informed and, and knowing what you need to do to become a really qualified candidate for actuarial positions. I would absolutely love to have you as a member of the brand new Accelerator program. It's going to be so awesome. And right now you are able to get a very, very good deal. You're getting the founder rate, which is already 50% off, but you're also getting your first month for a dollar. Okay, so I'm going to leave that coupon code open until 8.30, that means 10 more minutes. Go sign up if you are interested. There's, there's really no harm. You're investing $1, okay? $1 toward your career. You're going to get so much value out of just one month. So I put a link in the chat to that and the coupon code to get your first month for a dollar is success. I will put that into the uh, YouTube chat as well. Okay, so 10 more minutes, that's going to be available. Then I'm going to remove that coupon code completely so that you can't use it anymore. It's just for people that joined and stayed on this call. Okay, so thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it, I hope you learned, and I hope to see you in the community so we can do tons of trainings together. Okay, bye all.